Okay, let's start part three. In this part, we're going to focus on additional topic because in this topic, we're going to talk about probabilities. Utility does not involve itself probabilities, but when we are talking about decision making, taking into account probabilities is really important. Thus, it's important to talk about expected utility. What is really important when making decisions and trying to make them as rational as possible, then it's to turn uncertainty into risk. The difference between both of them is that uncertainty means that not all probabilities, uh, maybe one, maybe two, or out of many, are known. And uh, in this case, in, uh, in specific game, we can take into account probabilities related to different events, related to what nature can provide. In real world thus, many decision problems involve uncertainty instead of risk. Risk is when all outcomes have defined probabilities. What can we do about it, about the fact that um, in nature, in reality, uh, we always encounter uncertainty, not risk? There are two potential solutions. First of all, we do research. Even if you are a rocket scientist, probably uh, you will need to pay attention to many, many details in order to establish risk. But even if you are selling insurance, probably you are doing the same. You're trying to understand events, something that may cause injury, in order to determine probabilities of specific injuries in the future and thus adjust prices. So, by doing research, we can figure out frequencies related to specific states of nature, related to what happened, and then use those frequencies in order to estimate uh, probabilities of the future event. Of course, it's not always one-to-one, -one, but at least at something. Second option to turn uncertainty into risk is to uh, create some probabilities based on uh, makeup estimations. So you can use rational to um, rational thinking in order to define those missing probabilities. One of those rules is a uh, principle of insufficient reason, or also called principle of indifference. So uh, you can represent that uh, with this simple sentence. If n specific number of things can happen, each can happen, uh, with a probability of n divided by the number of the events. So, for instance, if you want to throw a coin, there are two sides of the coin, and uh, so hats and tails will have equal probabilities, right? Of course, in theory, uh, those two events can happen, but still, you can say that there is a 50% to pick a tail. Typically, when we discuss expected utility, we talk about lotteries, about winning or losing money. That's probably the best way of explaining this. So, when you're talking about utility, we can take into account a gamble. And in this case, we talk about expected utility because that involves probabilities. So when we consider gambles, we talk about expected utility, not absolute value. It's related to the fact that there are some specific differences in terms of utility 
between getting one euro or the tenth or the hundredth. So for instance, if you have nothing, getting one euro can more heavily increase utility than getting uh, next 10 or next 100. That's the way how it goes. That also nicely explains perception of money depending on your endowment. So, wealth has different impact on utilities. Means that if you had 10 euros and you get another 10 euros, you've doubled your amount of money. So the next 10th is seen as more valuable. But if you have 100,000, getting another 10 is just almost nothing. You can just easily um, use it to light your cigarette. You can conclude that the current state of wealth basically determines how you perceive increase in wealth. Let's consider another example. This example describes a model of rational choice. In this case, we are going to weight each outcome with a specific probabilities. Let's consider winning a 10 pound coupon in a lottery. If we know that a chance to win it is 60%, then we can simply calculate. In this case, expected value would be six pounds. If probability of winning this would be 50%, then the expected would be five pounds. In this case, when people know probabilities, they will probably prefer the first one because the expected utility is substantially higher. So most people will select the first lottery. Okay, let's play another game. Maybe you would like to play a game with me. Let's let's do that. Why not? So we can formally present a game that shows decision under risk. That includes probabilities, of course. I offer a gamble which goes like this. I throw a fair coin, a reliable coin, and then if a coin shows heads, I pay you four euros. If it's uh, tails, you pay me 25. Would you like to play this game? Of course not. Because you see huge differences between both. As you see here, this kind of problem we can represent as a lottery. Lotteries can be represented uh, along with this kind of formula. It's related to uh, probability and how the probability is distributed. In this formula, lottery equals multiplication of probability of a specific outcome and a summary of those. So we may have different probabilities and of course different outcomes. So for instance, x in this case can be plus 5, minus 10, 0, whatever. Plus 5 it means that uh, if you would play with me, you would get 5, minus 10, you would pay me 0. Uh, it's also possible, but of course not with a, with a coin, but maybe with uh, another device that can be used for this kind of lottery. Probability in lotteries are always either higher than zero or equal to zero. They cannot be lower than zero, of course.
when we consider lotteries, we also need to take into account that summary of all probabilities is always one, right? So if you throw a coin, then um, probability of tails and heads uh, summarized gives you one. In this case, expected utility or expected value of a lottery is pretty simple. So it's a summary of the multiplication between probabilities and specific outcomes. Let's move on. Let's consider the same example, the same lottery once again. As you probably remember, I offered you to pay you 4 euros in if the outcome is the opposite, you would pay me 25. As you see here, that's the gamble. So it's a 0.5, that's the probability, and we multiply 4 euros and 0.5 times 25 euros. In overall, we can calculate this gamble, this lottery, and expected utility would be 14.5 euros. What is also possible in this case is to not to take part in this gamble. Probably some of you thought, okay, I'm not going to play that. It's not fair, right? In this case, we can also calculate this lottery let's call it n. In this case, if you wouldn't play, it means that probability of getting 0, uh, it's, uh, it's 1, right? If you do not play, you get, you get nothing. So then expected utility of this lottery for both of us is 0. We call it trivial lottery, which means that you get one, uh, 0 euros with probability 1. Again, let's try to understand this theory uh, better. Later on, at the end of the presentation, I will explain some implication for more practical aspects. When we know probabilities, we simply make choice between different lotteries. In this case, our choice set was to either gamble or not to gamble. So it was your choice where to decide to gamble, to play the game with me, or not to gamble. In order to make a rational choice between those lotteries, so choose one of the options from the choice set, all we need to have is to constant or consistent preference and a decision rule. I'm wonder, what were your preferences and what kind of decision rule? you uh, applied. This kind of situation can be easily modeled. To understand that, we need to remember that when we make decisions under certainty, we always consider specific uh, decisions as rational if they can be represented as a utility function. The same can be said in this case when we analyze choices when probabilities are known. So rational preferences for lotteries can be represented by expected utility functions. It's the same. This uh, theorem was founded by Neumann and Morgenstern a while ago. If you want, you can open uh, presentation slides and in the comments you will find more information about this theorem. Based on this theorem, we can calculate expected utility of specific gamble. I'm not going to explain all the numbers. Uh, you can see it for yourself. But basically, for this example, we use the same data, 
So again, we throw a coin and uh, there is an outcome. So uh, if heads, then I pay you 4 euros. If tails, you pay me 25. And also we use a formula that expected utility of x is a square root of x. As a whole, we can say that it's a, an outcome expected utility of this gamble is 3.5. Of course, this value doesn't mean much. But what you could do, you could compare that with other games. So if I would offer you another game, then probably we could calculate those expected utilities for each game. If you would do that, if you would calculate, we need to remember that first we take into account utility and then, of course, probability. That's how it goes. Let's consider the same example once more. First gamble and expected utility is uh, 3.5. If you wouldn't play, then expected utility based on the calculations would be zero. We need to take into account if we would compare expected utilities between each of course members, uh, then those utilities would be different. That's an imminent characteristic of utilities. But nevertheless, still, we can objectively measure expected utility for this specific lottery. In this case, it would be uh, 3.5. So we can conclude that making a rational choice under risk simply means to maximize expected utility. What do you think? What will be rational behavior in this case? Gamble or not to gamble? And finally, let's think about how this theory applies to, to practice. We know that many companies, they sell insurance and they do that. And then later on, they reimburse costs and pay people after they get injured. So we wonder how they make money, how it's possible that they can make lots of money. They do it because managers, owners of the companies, they know that there are some differences between people. So some people are risk averse, whilst others are risk neutral or even risk seeking. So for some people you would say you would sell different type of insurance and for others you wouldn't sell insurance. So if you, for example, know that one person likes to do a kite surfing, it's not maybe super dangerous, but still you can get injury. But to those people, probably you wouldn't sell too many insurances. But to people who do not smoke, who do not drink alcohol, who do not drive car and drive car, who uh, live safely, probably uh, you will uh, pay them quite a lot. Uh, you would, uh, sorry, offer them. Uh, uh, really good insurances. But uh, if you, for instance, know that a person has, has many years uh, of uh, driving without an accident, probably you would offer this person a discount. Because then, based on the discounts, you would compete with the other companies. But on the other hand, if you know that a specific client had multiple uh, accidents in the car, then probably you wouldn't offer a bargain to a specific client. And that's the way how it's possible to uh, get some money based on expected utility, knowing that some people are more or less sensitive to get injured or have an accident. This, what you can do, you can calculate expected utility. 
This is why insurance works, because you can turn uncertainty into risk, you can calculate to some extent probabilities, and then offer different clients different things at different price. Because you know that you can match people with different utility functions. That's all. I hope that it helped you to understand why and how people make rational decisions.